Hey guys, Will from Potato Strong here. As you know, I've got this channel and Facebook page and Instagram with recipes, starch-based diet, lifestyle, which will help you lose fat, get healthy, get off the medications, helps the animals, helps the environment. So many benefits. The, the food that I've provided, the meals, is pretty much everything you need. I'll probably have variations over time and create some new, new things, but at the end of the day it's really simple. Fruit, vegetables, legumes like beans and grains, whole grains. I've got, you know, the mashed potatoes, baked fries, salads, oatmeal, banana ice cream, tacos, pasta, pizza. Um, three main meals a day for me. That's what works. I don't like to snack too much because I need to be satiated when I eat. So something like 100 calorie, like an apple or something, other than just for taste and nutrients, it's really not going to do anything for me. So if I'm feeling hungry, I need to eat a little bit more enough to get past that point. So I try to make sure the three meals are filling for, you know, a few hours. That's what works for me. Um, but the, the important aspect, because if you do that, if you do the McDougal type plan, any type of whole foods, fruits and vegetables, it's going to work. There's no doubt about that. But the key is you have to stick to it. You have to keep doing it day after day, month after month, year after year. So I think a lot about what would prevent somebody from doing this continuously, consistently. And I, I see what people, what, you know, what questions get asked on various forums and groups. And I, some, I try to look past the question, you know, not just answer the question, but understand what, what they're thinking, what the motivation is for the question. And it usually comes down to still being addicted to or used to eating foods that aren't ideal, unhealthy foods. <clears throat> so, for example, somebody asked if there was any kind of idea, concept of cheat days. And, uh, you know, that sets off red flags for me because if somebody asks that, especially before they've even started, you know, they're setting themselves up to fail with that kind of a mindset. But when you look a bit deeper, you're, what, what does that mean exactly? A cheat day or moderation where you eat something that's not ideal on occasion, that generally means that you're looking at other things from the from the whole foods you're looking at other f foods as more desirable so you're looking at whether it be animal products or junk food chips fast food you're saying that once in a while you want to enjoy you want to have something else that's better that's more enjoyable that you're restricting yourself from eating and that's a that's where the problem is. So, what worked for me is to go 100% into this. Some people want to transition. You know, it's a, it's a huge gap to go from meat eating to this. But in reality, the starch-based diet is pretty close to standard America diet in a lot of ways like with the mashed potatoes and the tacos and pizza and all that you just it's a very comforting diet 
lifestyle. But but you can sort of miss having that piece of meat. So there are some soy based and other products like meat products that you can have. I don't want to discourage people from that too much to be practical because I but on the other hand I was vegetarian for quite a few years and I ate a lot of the uh, products and in, in near the uh, before I went plant based there was these tofurkey sausages that were quite high in fat and um, it just it keeps you in that mode it can it can st keep you stuck so if I ever encourage someone to eat some things like soy some of the you know the ground round and the soy chicken burgers or whatever if I were to encourage somebody to eat that it would be as a transition with a timeline so it's not going to be you know, indefinite, because you may never get off of those products. But the key thing, though, is not so much that, but the mindset that other food is more enjoyable, more desirable. And I know people that can't really see that they're actually addicted to those foods so they keep eating desserts like cupcakes like um, all sorts of not even really healthy versions but sto you know bakery type uh, products and um, and just a lot of things that aren't really ideal so it keeps you hooked on those foods you're gonna if you keep eating those foods on a regular basis, you're going you're gonna to always want them. There's that addiction. So that's where that pleasure trap comes in. So I post a lot of stuff on what I eat every day. The other thing is people might see that as boring. There's actually a fair amount of variety, but most people generally don't eat a lot of different meals. You know, at a, over a period of time, they'll eat the same basic set of meals and then they'll, you know, maybe change or add new things. But you can use variety and you know even with oatmeal and different types of um, fruit during the year and you know if you look at all the recipes on my website there's a fair number of of different things but i i actually enjoy the foods that's the key i enjoy eating baked fries a lot it's probably because you know it was always seen as a bad thing but now it's like it's 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 totally fine so i can i you know Things that you might have, but they're so tasty, you know, and it's not just being restricted from it and, or feeling guilty about it in the past. Now you can eat it guilt-free. So what I'm, what I talked about before in another video was pain and pleasure. So you're associating more pleasure with other types of food, the food that you're used to eating, the the meat, and the dairy, or or desserts, or fattening foods, and you you know you, if you ask if you can cheat or whatever, it's like you're still you don't you, you're seeing other food is is more valuable more interesting more desirable so that's where the key comes in by going by doing this lifestyle for us you know a certain amount of time you develop your your um, taste for these foods and desires I mean there's food that you know there's certain things that people might not be as interested in even after a little while, like vegetables, certain vegetables, broccoli or cauliflower, you know, you're not excited about it. Maybe uh, salads don't excite people. But I've got a lot of things like the baked fries, banana ice cream, tacos, pizza, pasta. I mean, it's just, it's tasty food, comfort food. It, it's not stuff that you're going to be unexcited about so that makes it a lot easier and some of those other foods in the vegetables you you, know, you may develop an interest in and, and really want to eat those cravings for those types of foods so I think you need to give yourself a break from the, the junk foods and the crap that you know you might have been eating before and that's where I think the key thing to this like I'm getting close to about a year in a couple July 1st it'll be a year on this lifestyle and it's been easy it's been I totally love the food I totally desire 
Like if you eat more fruit, it's got natural sweetness when it ripens. So you'll desire like a nice juicy piece of watermelon or mango or something like that. In the past you might have been more desiring of a brownie or something with sugar and all sorts of stuff in it. Butter and eggs and all that. So those are the things that can require some adjustment. And I think by going 100%, getting rid of all that stuff in the house if you can, ideally. You might not be able to if you have family members, but that's that's the, the uh, that's the key. So it comes down to really enjoying and wanting to eat these foods versus feeling deprived of not eating the crap that you that you were eating before. And you know you can associate some pain with these foods that aren't healthy by looking at the health, understanding the science of saturated fat and cholesterol, and and really understanding the marketing behind the corporations and and just. So you get to this point where you're looking at that food in a negative way, not a positive way. And and related to the mindset is not being able to understand that what you, some of the stuff you're eating is causing a problem. Um, like I know people that out said, you know, when I when I ate pasta, I gained weight, and it's like, well, what were you putting on the pasta? What kind of sauce were you putting on? Cream sauces and oily tomato sauces. Parmesan cheese, bread and butter, whatever. What else with the pasta? So they, they'll tend to allocate things. I, I always find that people who have trouble losing weight will will think it's something that maybe they don't want to eat anyway. Like, or the, like they'll never. A lot of times they won't say, um, you know, oh those muffins had too much fat in it, or or the cupcakes had, you know, too much butter or icing on it, they'll, they'll think that they should cut back on the beans or, or they're eating too many potatoes or, you know, that's, that's the part that really needs to be analyzed. The, uh, when I, I have people come and ask me questions about, you know, that maybe they've been, they've lost some weight, but they've sort of plateaued. And I always come back to fruit, vegetables, legumes, and grains. And when you go into it, when you dig down a little bit deeper, like I ask people, you know, do you go to restaurants? Are you able, do you know what's in there? It's 100% that there's no oil and there's no fatty things in there. Are there any social events? I mean, you, sometimes you have to do those things. But, but, but with the food that you're actually making, are you eating three main meals a day? Are there snacks? Um, are there nuts, fatty foods and any oil um, people will sometimes I'll hear like I'm using a smidge of this or a pinch of that or a drop of this and, and that s sounds like they're minimizing what they're doing and, and, and people are really you know we're not really great at estimating what we're eating a lot of times we we underestimate things that's why like for me 100% was best because if I put a little bit of oil in something next thing you know I'm putting more oil I had these sun-dried tomatoes that were in oil, and I was pouring the oil into the sauce. It just it got, went from the, the oil on the, the tomatoes to in you know using the oil because it had a lot of flavor in the oil from the tomatoes, and it was just getting out of hand. So underestimating some of the, the negative things. I don't I can't really see what everyone eats 100% you know during the day after day consistently, but. that's the key is just I always go back to the calorie density fruit vegetables legumes and grains are gonna naturally be lower in calorie you can eat pretty much as much as you can I mean you're not gonna stuff yourself beyond belief but you're gonna eat until you're satisfied and just naturally because of the calories per pound of the food you're not gonna be able to exceed your your requirements for calories very easily I mean when you start getting in higher density calories, flours and even um, nuts and dried fruit and obviously oils and meat and dairy and all that kind of thing, it just starts to go go way up. So this way you don't really have to track anything. You just eat those types of foods and, and you lose the weight. So I've got the recipes. It's simple to, in concept to eat this stuff and you'll lose the weight. It's just can you do this? Can you stick to it? And Try to figure out 
you know what what's happening if you're if you're having issues. The other thing with scale weight is you know it can be a little bit emotionally um, draining if you're weighing yourself too much and and um, I mean I generally wanted to see a scale go down over time but I'm getting fairly lean now and you know my weight on the scales I think for the last month has been pretty much the same but I have a body fat um, measurement that's gone down a percent and the body fat is not necessarily 100% accurate the monitor but it's relatively you're going to see a decrease so accuracy is like is it exactly what your body fat is but relative it's going you know you, you want to see it go down and then visually and everything confirms that with the clothes and everything but um, what I want to say is that I plotted my graph of my weight over the last year and I've shown it to, I've shown it a few times and there are ups and downs even though I've been consistent with what I'm eating and that's you know I was doing some body weight training and sometimes you gain you know you, you hold on to some water or it's just you know you got to do it over time and not really um, do it on a daily basis and, and get crazy if it goes up a bit so You've got to look at other ways of seeing results in your clothes and you know other measurements that you can do. But everybody everybody wants to use that scale, and and, and I understand that. Um, you, you know, people tell some sometimes people say don't even look at the scale. And it's not, I'm trying to be practical. I know people want to see that. Like I've seen a drop of you know basically 32 pounds since I started, and you know you're going to see a scale drop even if you do some weights. You can't build muscle that quickly. Um, so you know, I'm being practical here, people want to see the drop in the poundage, and so it is It is part of an overall system of monitoring yourself, because visually you'll see some changes, but it's, it's you know, it's not going to be necessarily every day, every week, or, you know, it's going to be slow to some extent, and so, you know, you, you, you want to see the numbers change, so there's you know the body fat you can do in different ways measurements you know with a tape measure stuff like that but uh, yeah this this talk is mostly about the mindset just breaking through some of those concepts about the dieting mentality the portions the calories you really don't have to do that you just eat these lower calorie dense foods until you're satiated and it takes care of itself that's, you just got to trust it and uh, give it a shot. You know, if you're not, if you're just starting this diet, this lifestyle, do it for a month. Do it, you know, see how it goes. Try to keep going beyond that. But I've, my view sometimes is like, I got off coffee a while back and it was like, let me just see what happens. Let me try, you know. There's a lot of science, there's a lot of theories out there. At the end of the day, is it working for you? Are you doing this? And that's going to be what it boils down to. What 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 works for you? And so I hope I help I help you guys. And uh, I really try to see th break through some of these these mindsets that are keeping people from progressing. And and like I said, a lot of it is this just this the uh, patterns of behavior of eating those foods that you just it's just really hard to stop and um, you know I'm here to help you guys providing alternative foods that are really tasty and if you just stick to this give it some time you'll you'll learn to love some of these foods and you'll be set for life so I mean for me this has been amazing I'm, I'm convinced I'll never go back. Other times I did cycle up and down. I, I, it's just something's totally different this time because of doing this 100% and not being trying to moderate and still eating some of the junk, the cheese and all the stuff that I used to eat that just kept me unhealthy. All right, guys, I'm going to pack it in here. But uh, post any questions you have. I try to help you based on what's worked for me and um, if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your network and subscribe also 
go back in my list of videos. I've got videos on all the recipes that I've made, pretty much. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And, you know, people like to see the new videos, but if you go back, spend a little bit of time, all the stuff that I have, you know, I've, I've done recipes on, videos for you, show you how to make the stuff, and a bunch of discussions. And uh, we'll get you guys going, so talk to you guys later. See ya.